Oh, great to see you. When, when were you last back at Old Trafford? I guess in lockdown you've been in hibernation like everybody else. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I had my first face-to-face -face meeting this morning for 15, 16 months as well. And then you drive in here and there's a bit of a queue to get in. It was brilliant. Yeah, great to see people back. I mean, the ground is much different from when we played here. We both played many years here. And when I walk out into the middle, I find it hard to think back to having played here now because they've turned the ground around and it looks completely different. Is that how you feel yeah, about it I mean, as well? I almost can't remember the other way around now, can we? It's, it's incredible. But the one thing I do like is that they've managed to keep a bit of the old pavilion. And I think that keeps the tradition going, doesn't it? And the rest of the ground now is proper ground. You were Cheshire born and bred. You played Cheshire schoolboys all the way through. But it, was it always completely natural that Lancashire was, was going to be the club for you? Yeah, I, th I think so. Cheshire and Lancashire sort of have a bit of a crossover, don't they? So um, we're only down the road. Um, and it was always Lancashire, even though you were 20 miles the other way, as it was for you, it's the same for me. And a long career here, 20 years, happy days. Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them. We, you know, you look back, don't you? You remember the good days, which is what it's all about. There were clearly some days when we weren't playing as well as as other times. But uh, and this is a roses fixture. There's there's a, a decent crowd in, but I guess perhaps back to our time. But be, a little before then, there would be huge crowds for first class games. That's, that's gone a little bit now. And that, that intense rivalry, you see more in the 2020 and the blast games, which perhaps take us back to the kind of crowds that we would have remembered from our days in Roses games. Yeah, I, I mean, our, even our three or four day game, Roses matches, there were not big crowds, were there? No. Apart from when we went to Scarborough. There were some days at Scarborough when it was rammed. Um, but, but, you know, our, our time was Sunday League and then we played those semi-finals against them, didn't they, and quarter-finals when it, when, it when it was packed. But you look at the 2020 games over the last three or four years and the way the Roses games are marketed unbelievably well up here um, and the crowds and the atmosphere, it's, it's actually something to behold, I think. How many roses, hundreds you get? Um, I don't know. I know. I'm Do putting you? you on the spot. I looked this morning. Maybe, maybe three? Five. 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 I only got 199 in my career. I didn't know that. <laughs> and that was Court Mox and Bold Hartley. And, uh, I mean, you averaged over 15 roses games, those 500s, that 99 that I mentioned. Would you have felt, as perhaps we all did, a bit of extra edge playing yeah, against definitely. Yorkshire? Yeah, uh, definitely. Especially, I think, when we were younger and we were coming into the, into the team, the Yorkshire Championship game was, was the big game, wasn't it? Mm. It was the big game. But, I mean, how times have changed. My first game at Headingley, um, we went into lunch that first day and we all put blazers on to go into lunch because it was a Roses game and would you believe on the table there were cans of Tetley Bitter. <laughs> <laughs> and did people partake? I can't remember if anybody <laughs> dared to open but there were definitely cans of Tetley Bitter on the, t on the table at lunch. Now the, the reason we're chatting is that I, I've put together a, a, a documentary or programme on the India tour of 93 which I, I sent you a couple of weeks ago and, and I know you watched. If you can have success in India, it's one of the great things if you're a player, isn't it? This is the England dressing room, behind the scenes. The trip was a little bit like wacky race. <laughs> it brought people together because it was tough on everyone. I had the best view of the easiest catch that's ever been dropped. Absolute dolly. It was horribly embarrassing. The great side there, you can kind of tell that there's something very special there. Oh, no. <laughs> You had to suck it up and swallow almost in one go. Graham Gooch, the England captain, will not play in this test match. Put my finger down my throat and I forced myself to be sick. Ow! Well, one thing was for sure, I was always going to get a bat. You know what I mean? <laughs> we it! Cumbly, we hadn't seen before. He was really hard work. <laughs> I don't think it would happen in uh, professional sport today. My captain! <laughs> the way it went. <laughs> didn't go to plan. Oh. If I see it and he pitches it anywhere near me, 
under the wicket. What a magnificent way to reach your first Test 100. Beautifully struck by Hick. We all thought, we've got a chance in this game. I'm afraid not. That tour stands out in everyone's mind, just for the craziness, the chaos. How's Robin playing? <laughs> Needs to improve. <laughs> Thanks. Did, did that bring back some uh, happy and strange memories of an unusual tour? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you've captured it brilliantly um, in the respect that we all did a few tours and considering that the end of that tour we got hammered it was one of the tours that i remember with yeah, great more, fondness most vividly yeah well it was utterly chaotic for a start i mean what are your memories of of, of that side of the tour? well my, my first memory was um where we practiced before we went and the, the wicket that we practiced on i remember you getting it on the head at lily shaw at lily shaw yeah very very hard one day and I there was do you remember there was a little window between almost the canteen and then out in, into the gym area and I was watching through the window as you got hit I ran out and there was just blood trickling down <laughs> the back and I thought mm, is this what it's going to be like in India <laughs> um, and then it, of course one thing led to another didn't it um, one day games first which we did all right in um, and then the test matches that's the other change, really. It was a tour where the, the one days and the tests were intermingled. So you just pick one squad of, say, 16 or 17 players, and you've got to try and pick a squad for both mm. five-day games and one-day games, which, of course, is completely different to now. Mm. I mean, that's how I got a game in the test matches, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but yes, yes, absolutely. So it was the same 16, wasn't it? Um, and... Uh, I remember being in Lucknow early doors when you got ill. That was our hotel where Mike Addison is at the moment, probably on the toilet. Nobody saw you. you nobody was allowed in your room for, it seemed an age, it must have been four or five days. And when you came out, it looked like you were on death's, <laughs> death's door. Um, and then we played at Lucknow, didn't we? And um, that was where Embers got. Smashed Sidhu'd. by Sidhu, He got yeah. Sidhu, didn't he? Uh, and then what, Embers didn't feel up to playing, things like that. And the whole thing went wrong. I mean, there was a plane strike. It went everywhere by train. Everybody got ill. Um, one of the early games, we've got some nice footage of the, f the opening ODI, as it was. In fact, the first ODI was cancelled. We went to Jaipur, and we won the game off the last ball. You were there with Chris Lewis um, winning the game off the last ball. One ball to go. Here's He drives, and they're home, they've got it, England have won. We've got a lovely bit of you with the Man of the Match Award or Player of the Match Award. Tell me, somehow yeah. I don't think Audrey's going to allow this in the house. Wow. I think that might be put in the garage, should we say? I'm not sure it's going to make it to home, really. If she's seen it on the telly, I'll have a quiet word with her tonight and see what she says, but I really don't think she's going to... Because uh, I don't think she's going to let it in our house. Memories of that game? It's funny, um, I remember hitting Cumbley over mid-wicket, and it, it went, in our day, it went a long way, not like these boys hitting it now, it went a long way. And all I could think is, how have I done that? I had no idea what had happened. Um, and then Chris, we won, he, we scampered a single, single something off the, off the last ball, ball. Um, and we had a bit of a nice half an hour in the changing room. It was one of the few games we won on that tour, yeah. wasn't it? Um, and the Man of the Match awards were big, ugly things, I remember <laughs> that. I don't think it made it home. Um, and then and you, you, you played 75 one-day games for England in the end, and I suppose you'll be, be remembered more as a one-day player in international terms. That's going to go very quickly down the four runs. The man's wide at long leg. It's four very welcome runs for England, which takes them to four for 80. But back then, one-day cricket was not taken as seriously as it is now. It was not prioritised particularly by England. Um, do you kind of have regrets 
about how that was and perhaps the opportunities that are there for one day cricketers now in terms of T20 and the leagues around around the world that weren't there then or is, do you just see that as the changing game no it's, it's just the way the game has evolved isn't it and and if you know if if everybody thought oh I wish it, I wish I wish it was like that back then then you'd be going stir crazy that'll be four we had a good time we did our bit and now we're still trying to do our bit yeah. in other ways there's no, you know no point thinking of it any other way. We see a, a bit of you in Chennai, I think, which ended up as your last test match. I think, did you, you might no. have played one in Sri Lanka. Yeah, after. so I, we went to Chennai, didn't we? Then yeah. we went to Bombay, Bombay Mumbai, Mumbai, whatever. And you were and ill I there. Well. Um, so I watched you and Stewie running each other out <laughs> um, on the telly. standing at the same end who is going to go and then we went to Sri Lanka to really finish the tour off badly yeah. um, and that was my last game that was my last game I got I got I had a mix up with Chris Lewis got run out second dig and that was the last time I run out in your last test yeah. and and ten ten test matches I mean again do you do you look back with a little bit of regret there or, or yeah, not of course you, you always want to do better don't you um, and I played ten times. Um, you know what struck me? I was looking at your strike rate in Test cricket. What do you reckon your strike rate in Test cricket was? Probably about thirty. Thirty-six. Was it probably lower than mine? Now, but <laughs> the reason the reason I ask that: Do you think it's harder? Some you were a very aggressive player. Mm. Charge gets a wide bottom edge. Ultra aggressive mm. player. Do you think it's harder sometimes for aggressive players? coming into test cricket and you wonder whether you should play your natural game, whether you should play as a test match player, you know, as imagine they should play. Do you think it's tougher sometimes? Yeah, but I think the world has moved on. Absolutely. So the lads that play in test cricket today, it's a totally different scenario, isn't it? I mean, back 25 years ago, it was occupy the crease, it was this, it was that, it was the other. And one of my test matches I decided to play as I did for Lancashire and we were playing we were playing at Lords we played New Zealand at Lords and I'd got three or four and the off spinner was bowling I thought I'll just pump him back over his over his head and I dragged it and got caught mid on um, and there was just disbelief that I was three not out and tried to hit the off spinner over the top um, and got completely lambasted uh, not particularly in the dressing room, but by everybody else. Um, and then I went back into my shell. Um, and made but, So you think that crossover now between one-day cricket and test cricket, seeing players like Joss Butler, who's a player that you look after, ultra-aggressive player, he comes into test cricket. Splendid moment for Joss Butler as he goes through to his second test match 100. And almost tries to... Put, play the same way, or not completely, but do you think it's a bit easier now? I think it's a bit easier, even Joss though, Joss has a different method, doesn't he, for test yeah, match cricket, yeah. he obviously he does for, for one day and, and T20 cricket, um, but I think the advent of T20 cricket certainly has, has moved the game forward in many respects, and I think test match cricket has been enhanced by the way the batsmen now bat in test match cricket, um, and it's a lot freer, and people are... are often given license to play in a different manner than particularly a, a while ago. Uh, on that India tour we came across a very young Sachin Tendulkar, I think when he got 100 in Chennai that was his first 100 in India, he went on to become one of the greats obviously. That's Tendulkar's first test 100 in India, his third four of, the, four of the over, a lovely straight drive, again an effortless stroke and listen to the noise. And Anil Kumble, who again, it was one of his early tours and he ended up taking whatever he took, six, seven hundred wickets. Did you sense, very early on looking at those two in particular, that you were looking at two of the would-be greats? I think they both stood out, didn't they? At, at that point in time, we hadn't seen Kumble before. Um, 
and I think on that first tour particularly, he didn't really take the ball away from the right-hander that much, but it skidded in, didn't it? Mm. Um, and then latterly, as all greats, his game improved and, it, and he, his leg spinner got better and, and he became better. As for Tendulkar, then, you know, he was marked out, wasn't he? Um, and that knock he played, um, you know, it was a bit of an eye-opener how easy on the eye he was and how little trouble we had him in, yeah. um, which obviously went on not just for our team, but teams all over the world thereafter. And that was the only test tour that England made in the 90s. I played one test in India out of a hundred and whatever it was. And when you look now at, at the players you're involved with, they're going to India well, every, f every five minutes or so. That has completely, that, that shift has, has happened very dramatically and quickly. Mm. And I, I think, well, it's where the, you know, the BCCI rule the world, don't they, cricket-wise? So, you know, there's lots of tournaments there. Clearly the IPL for some has evolved since over the last 10, 12 years. But I, I, I do think that you have to embrace wherever you're going. Um, and we embraced India, although you know you weren't well, but we still got we still got out. We you know, we got to the Taj. I remember we met Mother Teresa, didn't we? Very early one morning, which was something else. Um, and if you can get out and embrace the country, it helps. It must help with your cricket. And do you pass that advice on both um, of you know touring life? Um, the ups and downs of, of, of your experiences. Do you use that now to, in your current job as, as an agent to, to the players? I try to, yeah. I mean, to me, it's an obvious thing that wherever you are in the world, if you stay in your hotel room, fine at the moment, there's no option. But when the world opens up again, if you stay in your hotel room, you are not going to enjoy life as much as if you can get out and, and embrace the local cultures. And I believe that that helps then your mind and your cricket. Um, and I think that's just a, a straightforward way that some people enjoy Asia more than others, whether it be the food, whether it be you know, the exaltation of the crowds, etc., etc. Um, and those, I think those that embrace generally get on better.